Hello and welcome to another Ukraine war update. Please make sure to leave a like and comment to support this channel. Recently, there have been some interesting developments on the front, so let's get right into it. On the Zaporizhia front, Ukrainian forces captured the village of Yurzhain from Russia after heavy fighting. Video footage released by Ukraine shows Russian forces retreating as Ukrainians moved into the village and raised the Ukrainian flag. According to Ukraine's deputy defense minister, the Ukrainian soldiers set up a camp nearby after retaking the city. The operation was mainly conducted by the Ukrainian 35th and 38th separate marine brigades, as well as other units of Ukrainian forces facing Russian troops from the 60th separate motorized rifle brigade and the 37 separate guards motor rifles. Together with the village, Ukraine recaptured 17.26 square kilometers from Russia and is now one step closer to the settlement of Staromanivka, several kilometers to the south. Russia responded to the capture with shelling and aviation attacks. The small village of Yurizhen only had a pre-war population of roughly a thousand but was one of the objectives leading south along the Mokryali River Valley toward Russian-occupied Mariupol on the Black Sea coast. Despite this small step forward, Ukrainian forces still need to advance nearly 50 miles if they want to reach Mariupol. In Robotine, Ukrainian forces recently liberated an area of about 13.65 square kilometers and now are about to take the fight to the first main lines of the Russian defenses. Here, Ukrainian troops also struggled to make fast progress due to the large amount of minefields protected by Lancet and FPV drones together with Russian artillery and anti-tank guided missile teams. Also, Russia heavily relied on the use of attack helicopters who were able to engage advancing Ukrainian columns beyond visual range. Despite all this, the Ukrainian 47 separate mechanized brigade managed to enter Robotine as several recent drone videos show. They used Bradley infantry fighting vehicles to push into the city and even managed to evacuate a few civilians who were still left in the city. In a telegram post, the 47th brigade said that they will release more footage from Robotine once operational security allows it. Another drone video shows fighting between Ukrainian and Russian troops in the village. We can see soldiers and a Bradley engaging suspected Russian positions as a lot of smoke and dust is visible. The Bradley attacks in a shoot and scoot maneuver in which it keeps switching between going forward and backwards. This is done in order to avoid possible Russian incoming fire in the form of anti-tank weapons, artillery or drones. Since the beginning of the Ukrainian counteroffensive in June, the 47th Brigade has spearheaded the assaults in that sector with Bradley infantry fighting vehicles and Leopard 2 tanks. The capture of Robotime would be another small but important step in Ukraine's counteroffensive and open up the possibility to push southwards towards Melitopol. Melitopol is a key objective that must be overcome in order to retake Crimea or to cut off Russia's land bridge to the occupied peninsula. Robotine is about 15 miles north of Totmak, one of Russia's most heavily fortified garrisons in the occupied Zaporizhia Blast. According to the Institute for the Study of War, the Ukrainian attacks on Robotine are tactically significant because advancing in the area could enable Ukrainian forces to begin operating beyond the densest of the Russian minefields that have slowed down the counteroffensive launched in early June for months now. Russian sources also confirmed that Ukraine gained a foothold inside the town with pro-Russian outlet Ryba describing the situation as difficult. What I find interesting about this footage is that it seems to show the Bradley in proper combat for the first time in a longer video. Before this, most clips we saw were from Bradleys that were hitting mines or were struck by FPV drones. Seems the Bradley was performing well and pretty much controlled the situation. Shoot and scoot tactics require skilled coordination and training as they involve quick and precise actions to dismantle, move and re-establish the weapon system. Also, it seems like Ukraine finally started to conduct nighttime offensive operations using the Bradley. Well, I am sure they have already have done so before, but now we see video footage from it. Darkness provides natural cover, making it more difficult for the enemy to detect and track the movement of attacking forces. This element of surprise can catch the enemy off guard and disrupt their defensive plans. Russia on their side released footage of a disabled Bradley being attacked in the middle of two disabled Leopard 2 tanks. I honestly do not know how recent the footage is however. All I can say is that it surfaced recently. I think it was reported that this was an anti-tank missile that struck the vehicle, but I could be wrong. Does anybody know more about this? Let me know in the comments. Also make sure to like the video if you have not already. I know many of you are silent viewers, but your engagement really helps this channel out a lot. 
witness here, however, is most likely recent footage. It shows the first confirmed destruction of a striker on the southern front. What is interesting here is that this striker was equipped with a mine roller indicating it was an engineer squad vehicle used for mine clearance. There was footage of a FPV drone strike on a striker released before but back then the video did not show any outcome. I do not believe that the FPV video I already shared in another Ukraine war update and this video right here are related. I also do not know what exactly took out this striker here. Ukrainian forces managed to shoot down a Russian KF-52 helicopter in the area of Robotine a few days ago. Seems like they used a surface-to-air missile for this. The helicopter was not operating alone but looks like the second helicopter got away. As I mentioned before, Russian helicopters gave the Ukrainian attackers quite some hard time on this part of the front so I think shooting down this one was a significant morale boost for their vehicle crews. I think you can imagine that nobody likes being picked off one by one beyond visual range. Russia confirmed the downing and even released footage of a rescue mission for one of the pilots. It seems that Russian helicopters currently always operate in groups of three helicopters. Two conduct strikes while the third one stays behind in the vicinity to quickly conduct rescue operations in the case of one helicopter being shot down. With this tactic Russia adapted to the increasing danger of anti-air defense systems their helicopters constantly have to face while operating in Ukrainian airspace. It has to be said that combat search and rescue missions are inherently risky due to factors like enemy threats, challenging terrain, and adverse weather conditions. These missions are dynamic and unpredictable. Rescuers must be prepared to adjust their plans based on evolving circumstances, such as changes in weather, enemy movement, or the pilot's condition. Here it was reported that one pilot was KIA and the second one could be rescued mostly unharmed. Despite that, in general pilots should be considered more valuable than aircraft due to a combination of factors, including their training, experience, decision-making abilities, and the potential for human life. While aircraft are costly assets and crucial for military and aviation operations, pilots' unique qualities make them more valuable assets. Despite the threat from Ukrainian anti-air defense systems, Russian planes conducted a number of airstrikes across Ukraine. They mainly used Fab 500 M62 bombs and unguided rockets as footage shows. The Fab 500 M62 high-explosive bomb is designed to destroy military industrial facilities, railway junctions, light armored and soft skin targets, manpower and military field fortifications. Some of them have been fitted with a JDAM type kit involving pop-up wings and satellite navigation. Another theory is that the bomb has been fitted with wings simply to extend its range to up to 70 kilometers. It also is believed to give Russian aircraft a standoff ability to hit Ukrainian targets without risking exposure to Ukrainian air defenses. As of May 2023, converted Fab 500 glide bombs continued to be used by Russia and Ukraine, with up to 20 of them being dropped every day, and Ukrainian air defenses lacked the capability to intercept them. Another Russian video released by the Russian Ministry of Defense shows a pair of Sukhoi Su-25 planes conducting a combat sortie using unguided rockets against Ukrainian positions. The Sukhoi Su-25, NATO reporting name Frogfoot, is a highly capable and rugged close air support aircraft developed by the Soviet Union. It was designed to provide air support to ground forces in a wide range of combat scenarios. Over the last couple of days, Ukraine conducted a number of drone attacks on the Russian capital city of Moscow. Here is one of such attacks. The drone hit a Russian building, but it seems that it has not caused much damage. Russia says that they intercept or jam most of the drones Ukraine sends at them, but it always happens that some go through Russia's air defense. Still, this attack should be more considered a symbolic attack since the real tactical and strategic value of them is not that high. That's it for this video guys, thank you very much for watching, this time I made the update a little bit shorter and hope it was still interesting for you, as always please make sure to leave a like and comment, also share this video to help this channel reaching a larger audience, I know I say this basically every video, but I cannot state enough how important this is, if you have not already subscribed and like such types of videos feel free to press the subscribe button, hit the bell and enable all notifications for this channel. That way you let YouTube know that you want to see more such videos. I will link the last Ukraine war update here in the case you missed it. Also if you want to support me further you can do so by buying me a coffee. That really would be great. Thank you until the next time.